So let's talk now. So, so that's the first part of it, developing better understanding of our processes. Let's talk about how we can optimize our processes with the same result, same information. And we're going to use something called the desirability function. This is, uh, and we're going through this pretty quickly. This is an overview, but this is a, one of the things that uh, the DOE, t most DOE software packages do well, is taking and help us to center a process, in this case based on a dimension. We use something called a desirability function that says, at our target dimension, we're going to consider that part to have a 100% desirability. That's a perfect part. And if we get to the upper or lower specification limit, we've got zero desirability. That's uh, that's what we're gonna. We, if if we make a part that's outside of this dimension, we're gonna throw it away. And in between 50%, whatever. This is a compromise. Okay, it's not a bad part. It's not perfect. How does that help us? Well, after we've run our designed experiment, we can take. Our software will take, and this is not our software, this is other people's software. We don't sell this software, we just use it. The pro this is a simple example where we've used fill speed, and this is hold pressure. I apologize, the text is a little bit small here. And we've mapped out, we've converted, not in terms of dimensions, we've converted this into desirability so that we can see where the process is centered around this dimension. And, and I've, I've included up here a, uh, a 3D version of this that where we've got this ridge right here of 100% desirability where we perfectly target that dimension. That's a combination of fill speed and hold pressure. We can fill at 30% fill speed and 14% hold pressure or we can go to 90% fill speed and about, oh, that's about 16% hold pressure and get a perfect part. Up here, this section where we get down in, into zero desirability, that's a bad part. That's anything above about 22% hold pressure. The part's too big. And somewhere down low here, we're getting onto the smaller side, below 10% pressure. We're starting to get along the, this, the, we're at about 30% desirability in here. The part's getting small. Okay, that's great. What is, what is, how does that help us? When we've got multiple dimensions, either multiple cavities, multiple dimensions, uh, this and this right here, we've, we've done a cosmetic response. Now we have to meet multiple requirements. And this is the same part. With this part, at low fill speeds and high hold pressures, we get the best cosmetics, about 90%. And down here, uh, in this corner, anything, uh, if we're filling too fast, I'm not sure what the cosmetic defect is. Could be a blemish, could be, uh, you know, gate, gate blemish, could be burns, could be texture. But down here is where these are bad parts, okay? What the software allows us to do is combine all of these. And when we combine the two, remember our dimension was targeted best in this area. Our cosmetics were best over in this area. And the software now gives us a combined or a composite desirability that allows us to center the process using data. And what this says is we've got this kind of flat spot here this that we don't get a perfect part. We don't target everything exactly, but we've got uh, up to about 60, 65% match in this range. Here's our here's where we get outside of 50% desirability, bad parts in this region. And so now we've got a simple a very visual tool, data-driven tool, to center our processes. And this is useful particularly when we've got a, a complex process where we've got multiple dimensions, multiple responses, and we want to center them all at one time. Uh, there's, there's tools in the software to find this sweet spot, this optimum, and tell us, tell us where to center that process. But, and this is the but, this is the, the second part of where we, we come back to our understanding of the four plastics variables. 
and decoupled molding, we have to be careful with these results. Because what this process is suggesting that we do is our process is optimized at the lowest fill speeds. Our highest desirability is at a very low fill speed. And what do we know about running processes at very low fill speeds? This, they're unstable. We're on the steep part of the rheology curve. This may not be the best place to run. So now this is where we put our thinking cap back on and say, hey, you know, we may want to run out here and, and it would compromise a little bit of our cosmetics if we can and get a more stable process. Or better yet, let's find out. Say it's a burn. Let's fix the vents. Let's fix the mold so that we can run in the faster range of our window here. And rather than just take what we see way too commonly, customers taking the DOE results as gospel. They say, oh, DOE said we have to run down here. Well, no, let's, let's use our smarts and fix the pro use DOE to find the problems with the mold, to fix the problems with the mold, and run more effective processes in, 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 in as a result. Okay, there's now we've we're going to talk about setting process alarms. And here the DOE can help us as well. Process alarms here is where we're we're typically with cavity pressure. We've got a sensor in the whoops, we've got a Sorry about that. Sensor in the mold that's it's gathering cavity pressure data and feeding back to the EDART. EDART's plotting data along. We've got our upper and lower alarm limits based on, say, a peak cavity pressure. Everything's running within the alarm limits, so we, the EDART is sending to a contact closure to, to tell the part diverter to send all the parts into the good bin. <coughs> and now along comes a bad part, goes outside of the alarm limit, and the EDART sends a contact closure, tells the parts to go into the reject bin, and we automatically keep short shots and flash out of, out of, uh, from going to the customer. <coughs> so this allows us to improve quality, catch problems immediately, and automate inspection, reduce costs through automated inspection. And we do this using peak cavity pressures, there's a cycle integral which is the area under the curve that correlates very, very well with, with part dimensions. Um, but the question is where do we set our alarms and which measurements do we use? Do we, do we use the peak? Do we use the cycle integral? We can measure time to peak. There's about a hundred different measurements on the eDART that we can calculate which one of those do we use. And we're what alarm levels do we use to catch these stray parts? So this is where the DOE can help us again. <clears throat> when we ran the DOE initially, we were looking at just the correlation between machine conditions and part characteristics. How does fill speed affect part quality? How does hold pressure affect part quality? We can take the same data from the DOE when we run the DOE, we change our machine conditions and we gather cavity pressure data and flow rate data and melt temperature data. We can gather all that information for each of our experimental conditions, measure the parts along with that, and correlate the two. 